Krishna Do you want more from your life more happiness better health deeper relationships increased productivity and then what if i told you that just one thing can help you in all of these areas yes an attitude of gratitude today our speaker shrimati rukmini devi mata ji will tell us how a grateful heart is always happy and how we can develop an attitude of gratitude Rukmini Devi Mata ji joined the ISKCON society in San Francisco in 1968. She then traveled to Montreal to meet Srila Prabhupad, founder acharya of ISKCON, with the six devotees who were on their way to open the temple in London. She was initiated in Montreal and later served in Boston as an artist and then pujari there and in New York City. In 1972 she was sent by Srila Prabhupad to Mayapur with a group of artists to learn the art of putul clay doll making for teaching it is also called dioramas these diorama exhibitions were later completed in los angeles and detroit she is married to his grace anuttama das is con's global minister of communications for 25 years together they owned a business called kindred spirits which supported many iskon outreach projects she now lives in washington dc so let us hear about the benefits of gratitude by shrimati rukmini devi mata ji thank you so much hare krishna hare krishna i'm rukmini walker and i wanted to speak with you today about appreciative love or gratefulness i'm here in mumbai now i flew here from delhi a couple of weeks ago and i noticed that the delhi airport was decorated with neon candy canes and all christmas decorations so i was very surprised to see christmas in india and since i've been here in mumbai i've seen christmas trees and snowmen and uh so christmas has become a commercialized thing but really the spirit of christmas is about giving and I wanted to speak about this spirit of giving and about um especially appreciating divine gifts. So when we hear the story of Christmas, we hear that there were three wise men that came from the east and they had calculated by astrological calculation that there was a a very uh great light had been born for the world. So they came to offer gifts to that um divine person. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhaviti bharata that whenever there's a decline in religious principles he comes or he sends his servant or he sends his son to to help light the world with these kinds of divine gifts and divine knowledge so gratitude for for this mercy of that comes from from divinity this is one of the qualities of a devotee of the lord appreciation and gratitude for the one who supplies us all the necessities of life who supplies us everything we need so when we think about knowledge one of the components of knowledge is this quality of gratefulness to be to be conscious that that we're receiving gifts if we are awake if we're paying attention in our lives we'll see that everything is coming to me as a gift we talk about becoming god conscious or krishna conscious first we have to become conscious actually of of the gifts that we're receiving so krishna in the bhagavad gita again he asks us be conscious pay attention to the fact that that um there is that pure taste of water and divinity is there that when we see the light of the sun and the moon that that divinity is present there that in in the gifts of all abilities of that people receive that, that that's a gift from divine grace so this kind of uh paying attention to the gifts we're receiving this 
this attention is the doorway to gratitude. If we want to open our hearts to gratitude, it starts by paying attention to the gifts that we're receiving at every moment in our lives. So this attention is the doorway to gratitude. Gratitude is the doorway to, to actually experiencing a sense of wonder, a sense of awe at these divine gifts. And, and that kind of awe or sense of wonder is a doorway to reciprocation, to being able to give and receive love from, from the divine, but also to, to being able to, to experience love in our human relationships as well. Maybe you've seen or uh, heard the story of the, the Brahmin and the cobbler. The great sage Narada Muni went to Vaikuntha and came back to earth. And he, he was asked by a very proud Brahmin, uh, when you went to the spiritual world, when you went to the land of Vaikuntha, what was my Lord Narayan doing there? And the Lord had told Narada Muni to say, oh, he was threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. So the proud Brahmin, who felt very um, entitled with his position and his knowledge, he said, oh, that's preposterous. It's not possible that anyone could be threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. And, and then he, Narada Muni went to a humble cobbler, and, and he told him that he'd just come from Vaikuntha, and the simple cobbler who was sitting under a, a big banyan tree doing his work he, he said, um, Oh, Narada, where have you come from? And, and Narada said, I've just come from Vaikuntha, and I saw Lord Narayan there. And the cobbler was dancing in ecstasy and joy. And he said, What was my Lord doing in Vaikuntha? And Narada Muni said, He was threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. And the simpler cobbler was so joyous and so much overwhelmed with a sense of of wonder and awe that he said, yes, my Lord can do anything. He is so great. So this mood of humility, this appreciation, this gratitude, this wonder, this sense of awe and wonder, these are all the components of a grateful heart, of a humble heart that we see in this beautiful story. How great is my Lord? He can do anything. So we have to remember that we actually come into this world empty-handed, we come here naked, and everything we receive is, is coming to us as a gift. We actually come into this world as a debtor. I'm so indebted to, to, to my mother, to my parents. I'm indebted to God for the air that's supplied to me for, for my very body. So these are the gifts we, we receive when we come into this world. First of all, we're indebted to our mother, our, the mother is considered the very first guru. So um, we live by the mother's milk. She gives us her own milk, or maybe she gives us a bottle, but still she, she cared for us and staying up at night and giving us her own selfless love. But where, where is our gratitude for, for the, this kind of gift of, of love that we've received? Around the time of World War II, the Nazis performed a very cruel experiment where they had babies in a nursery, and they wanted to see what would happen if, if they kept the babies clean and fed, but not given any kind of human affection. What would be the result? And, and the, uh, they found that those babies not being given any human touch, any love, any affection, they weren't able to live even though they were being fed and they were being kept clean. So just for the, the love that we've received, the love that we've been given, the care that we've been given, we're indebted to so many people in our lives. In our, at the time of our birth, in our childhood, in our work, we're indebted to so many people in our families. We are um, practitioners of, in this bhakti tradition, we are pr practitioners of bhakti yoga, which is the love, uh, it's the yoga of, of exchanging love with God to give and receive, to, to receive and to give love, an appreciative love. It's, bhakti is, is like a yoga of gratitude, a giving and a receiving, a calling the name of God and receiving gifts from God. Um, 
according to the bhakti tradition, when we wake up in the morning, we say something in praise of God, some glorification of God, and then we thank God for, again, waking me up that again you've given me life, you've given me today another day, you've given me my breath, you've given me another chance to live another day. So this is a like a actions of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, but also uh, a, an a- acting in gratitude. And then we thank Mother Earth, Mother Earth, the goddess of the earth. She's holding all the mountains, she's holding the rivers, and she's holding me. And so before putting my foot on the floor each morning after I wake up, I, I thank Mother Earth and I ask her forgiveness for um, putting my feet on her. So these are the beautiful acts of humility and gratitude in the bhakti tradition. In our lives, we can choose whether we want to have this kind of consciousness of gratitude or whether we want to have a, a consciousness of, of scarcity. So without the wisdom of of these spiritual traditions, like the bhakti tradition, we might wake up in the morning with a consciousness more of scarcity. I might wake up in the morning thinking, oh, I didn't get enough sleep, or I don't make enough money. I never have enough time to do what I want to do. My family doesn't love me or respect me enough, or maybe... We don't have enough wilderness left in the world. There's so many people. So we can choose to have this consciousness of appreciative gratitude or live in a consciousness of scarcity and want. This is our choice at every moment. It's said that when we give a gift, we give what we can spare. But when we give appreciation, when we give gratefulness, we give from our hearts. So this is very important that It's not about a material gift, but it's a gift of the heart, a gift of loving, appreciation, a sense of um, paying attention to the gifts I'm receiving from from people all around me, from divinity, from the Supreme. Um, So paying attention, uh, feeling that gratitude, experiencing gratitude, and that gratitude takes us to this beautiful sense of wonder, sense of awe, And that opens our hearts to loving reciprocation. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that all living beings are part of him. He he explains that that every, every living being is in him and belongs to him. So we can appreciate and be enriched by by that knowledge of that interconnectedness, that connectivity, that that all living beings are part of Krishna, that they're there's not really a separation in, in the eternal and, and true sense, that all living beings have that beautiful connectedness to, to divinity. Krishna also says in the 10th ch- chapter of Bhagavad Gita that he says, know that all opulent, beautiful, and glorious things, um, creation, spring from but a spark of his splendor. So this is a great gift to be conscious of that interconnectedness, to realize that all things that are coming to me are are gifts from from that divine source. Henry David Thoreau, a great philosopher from the U.S., said something very beautiful. He said, Only that day dawns to which we are awake. So if we're really sleeping through our lives, we we haven't even had a, a morning's dawn yet. So we have to wake up to the gifts that we're receiving. And one who is awake is grateful, and one who is grateful becomes actually great due to gratefulness. And without this kind of gratefulness or gratitude, love is actually impossible. What is the opposite of, of this gratitude? What is the opposite of gratefulness? You could say that the opposite of gratefulness is a sense of entitlement, that I deserve everything that's coming to me, and perhaps I've made my own good fortune. I'm a self-made man or self-made woman, and all the good things that come to me have come by my own power, by my own brilliant mind, or my own um, prowess. But this is a very um, cancerous thought, actually, 
that um, that's devoid of gratitude, and this kind of thinking can be very deadly in our relationships, this kind of entitlement. There is an international movement that's gaining momentum in the world right now called the Me Too movement, where many women are coming forward and saying that they've been um, abused or um, somehow harassed in different ways. And by, by men, you know, maybe, maybe a boss or maybe some situation, some work situation. And it's a very unfortunate thing. So you can see, if we look, what is the source of that kind of consciousness or that kind of harassment that someone is thinking, by my position or by my place of power, I have a right, I'm entitled, and I can, I can use my employees or or um, people under my care, I can use or misuse them as I like. I can, I can abuse people as I like because of my position of, and there's no repercussion for that kind of exploitation. So this is really the opposite of a grateful consciousness. It's the opposite of appreciation. That, that um, just imagine an opposite of that kind of consciousness. Someone is assisting you in your office, and you think, yes, I'm so grateful to you for whatever contribution you can make toward, toward this work, toward this office. There's a beautiful example that a grateful heart is like, is like a, a fountain that's, that's overflowing. Actually, um, it's said that a grateful heart is heaven itself. It's so beautiful. So if we want to exist in heaven, if we want to not have someone heaven in some faraway place, but have heaven in my heart right now, in my daily experience, we can try to be grateful. And that gratitude is heaven itself. So this image of a fountain overflowing, overflowing. And, and when, we have, when that fountain has a small bowl and the water is gushing up and the, the water is overflowing, then, then this is a beautiful image of an overflowing thankfulness that is, um, is a beautiful place to exist in our hearts. It's a very, it's a joyous place. It's the um, source or the doorway to joy, you could say. Those, so attention, paying attention in our lives is the doorway to gratefulness. Gratefulness is the doorway to um, this sense of wonder, sense of awe, this joy. And this kind of joy is, is like a doorway to loving reciprocation with, with the divine person. In the bhakti tradition, we, we call him Sri Krishna. And also in, in our human relationships, just to appreciate the, the gifts that I'm receiving from my co-workers, from my husband, my wife, my children. So you can imagine if, if the fountain, if I keep getting a bigger and bigger bowl, in other words, if I keep wanting more and more and more, I need the latest phone, I need the latest car. I need a bigger house. I need this and I need that. I have to have the, the latest shoes and all of these things. So that bowl of the fountain keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that gushing water from the fountain is not able to overflow because the bowl keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like a disease of acquiring acquisition. Uh, like we hear of the disease of having, having the flu, having influenza. So this is like a disease of affluenza. I've, I've become, or the world has become so affluent that, that my capacity has gotten so big that I want new and new and more and more. And that fountain of gratitude can't really overflow the way it's meant to overflow. So if I can give another example, another beautiful water example, if you're standing on the bank of a, of a still pond and you, you take a pebble and you throw it into the pond, if you throw one pebble over here and one pebble over here and one pebble over there, those pebbles, from each of those pebbles, there will be uh, concentric circles forming and radiating out from each one of those pebbles, right? And, and if, if one pebble is thrown here, one thrown there, one thrown there, then those 
radiating circles will clash with, with each other. But if I can throw my pebble right in the very center of the pond, and then throw another pebble in the center, and if you can throw your pebble in the center, then we can have beautiful, harmonious, concentric circles radiating out from that center in harmony rather than uh, disharmony. So this is a beautiful formula that if I can, I can see that I, I'm connected to my source, to be grateful to that source, and to see other people, other living beings of all colors, of all nationalities, of all races and castes, they're also coming from that design, divine source. Actually, there's a beautiful quote from the Koran where it says that God has made, made each of us different so that we would have to learn to get along with each other and respect each other. And if God, in his infinite wisdom, had wanted, he could have made us all the same. But that's not the way it is. So we can honor each other, seeing that we all come from that same source, and try to offer our gratitude into the center of that pond. And then those generating circles that, that radiate out from that center, we can have humanity, we can have community, we can have art, we can have music, we can have love of, of other people, we can have science, we can have so many things, but understanding that everything, all those gifts come from that one essential divine center um, in harmony rather than disharmony. So these are a few thoughts on um, appreciative love, on having a spirit of giving, having a, a gratefulness in our hearts that will actually um, be the doorway to love and actually a doorway to becoming great ourselves. By becoming grateful, we become great. So these are my thoughts, and I thank you so, so very much. <laughs>